Hi, this is Mike Peterson from Challenge Island, Oakland County East, back with another one of our Steamtastic Fridays. So in most of our Steamtastic Fridays at this point, we've talked about great things that humans have come up with, everything from remote control cars, to steam trains, to the mobile strip, all kinds of things. But there's a lot of other pretty cool creatures out there that do a lot of steam. So for the next few weeks, we're gonna focus in on one of those cool creatures from the insect kingdom and take a look at the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math that they do to service our world and do some cool things for humans at the same time. In particular, we're gonna take a closer look at the honeybee for the next few weeks. So most of you have hopefully seen one. Here's a quick picture of what one looks like, just as a reminder. But they've got a lot of cool parts that science has given them, which makes it possible for them to do some amazing things in our world. So let's do a quick tour of the bee so we know who we're working with as we talk about them over the next few weeks. So a bee has three basic parts to it. It has its head, of course. The thorax is a fancy word for kind of his back or his middle part. And then he has an abdomen, which is kind of the back part here. He's got a lot of other special features as well. So he's actually got two different kinds of eyes. So he's got two compound eyes. So those are actually several different eyes in one that allow him to see a lot of different directions at one time. And his brain is smart enough to put all those back together into one picture. Kind of like if you had a bunch of cameras or a bunch of TVs you were looking at and you could figure out what picture is being made by those. Bees do that all the time. They also have three eyes that are called ocelli eyes that allow them to see light and dark and they can tell if something's getting close to them or not. So that gives them some additional safety features there. Uh, of course, antenna that help them to sense what's going on around them. They've got a mouth, and in particular, we call it mandibles on a bee. So those are kind of like his teeth that stick out that help him to chew and uh, get things into his body. He's got a tongue, also known as a proboscis. And if you take a look there, if you can see that, it's almost as long as his legs. It's really long. So that gives him special features that allows him to get into flowers and get the nectar out so that it can create that cool honey that we like to eat. Uh, he's also got some legs, so six different legs, as you can see, front, middle, and back there. And he's got a really cool feature on the back here called pollen baskets, or sometimes they call those pollen pants. So he's actually got special features or special pockets or spaces in his legs. So when he goes around to collect the pollen, or technically when she goes around to collect the pollen, that, that can, she's got some place to put all that and then bring it back to the hive to turn it into honey. And also one other cool feature from a, almost from an engineering standpoint, when it comes to his wings, there's four wings, but they've got special hooks between the front and the back wings on each side so that they hook together to make kind of a super wing that helps the bee to fly even faster. So a bee is thanks to partly in part to those hooks, a bee can actually move its wings over 200 times a second, which allows it to fly so fast. And it can actually fly over 15 miles an hour which means it's faster than most humans can run when it goes around to do all its work collecting things. So the bee's a pretty amazing insect, and we'll learn more about the technology behind what it does, how it engineers its hives, and things in the week to come. But just to leave you with a couple other thoughts for now, here's a close-up picture of those pollen pants. So if you look really close at these back legs of the bee, if you notice they're a little thicker than the other legs, those are those pollen pants in action. So, so this bee has already collected some pollen that's going to take back and then put to work to start making some of that honey. So the, the last thought I wanted to leave you with for now, one thing we can do to help the bees in the world to do the amazing things that they can do is to make sure that there's flowers for them to eat so that they can get the pollen and spread the pollen and fertilize everything so that they can get nectar and honey and all those things flowing to, to make things work. So here's just a few suggestions. So as we're getting into spring, if you're trying to think, what would be some fun flowers to plant? Here's a few ideas, or you could also Google around and just look for ideas and just check for your part of the country, what kind of flowers would be appropriate for bees that they could get pollen from and gather and create nectar and those kinds of things. So these are just a few ideas. Some of these smell really good and are fun to plant anyways. So I encourage you as you're, as you're selecting those, to talk to mom and dad, see if you can get some of these on the list of what you're gonna put in your garden this year. And then you can start watching some bees and see all the science, technology, engineering, arts and math that go into what they do really close up. In fact, right in your own backyard. 
All right, with that, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll look forward to learning more about bees with you next time.